Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Kif haalikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. How are you doing today? Ona, ikram wa believe your name. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Ahmed, wa alaikum wa salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa rani ahnaya ya akhoya. Ahmed al-Mahdi and Al-Naz Shaheen. I think that's our sister's name. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi. We're meant to start this at six. I was waiting for our beloved brother, the Game Master of American. I think he must be tied up again. He's got the link, so he should be joining us shortly. Sultan, my man. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. The way I'm going to run this live, inshallah, it's, not, it's, not, it's going to be a quick one. Not, not very long, 50 minutes or so. And hopefully we'll have a brother Abu American come on. Is I've got an article to go through with you guys first. Okay. I feel like we're we flogged the horse now with regards to sisters being wary of their age uh, in the marriage marketplace and how important it is for them to take advantage of their youth. But we're gonna go through one more article today because I feel like this issue does not get enough attention, does not get the attention that it deserves does not get the attention that it deserves because we've been telling women that if they pursue their career and get their degrees and all the rest of it you guys know what i'm talking about that you know all will be well and dandy um by the time they decide that they want to get married when they're in their late 20s early 30s the brother of their dreams will just be there waiting for them and this is not how it works in fact these sisters get their careers their education and so on and so forth become established in the workplace but then they have a double problem. The first problem is they're aging out. Late 20s, early 30s, you're aging out. That's the second problem, which compounds the first problem, is that now she will no longer accept or settle for an average dude. Because why? Because she's got her master's degree, because she's a doctor, because she's a fill in the blank, because she's established. And it's very difficult, if not borderline impossible, for a woman to accept a man who is behind her socioeconomically. Bottom line. Very hard for her to accept that. So the first problem is she throws away her prime years. The second problem, which makes the first problem even worse, is that she has even higher demands and, and demands as an older, less desirable woman than when she did when she was a younger, more desirable woman. And it's sad. It's sad. It's sad. I remember I remember once, you know what? Let me just share this story with you. My uh, one of my sisters, she was 23 years old. And I was in, you know, encouraging her to consider the options uh, that we were presenting to her. And I remember saying to her quite bluntly, I said to her, sis, look, my exact wording. This was my exact wording. I said to her, you're approaching your sell-by date. 25, you've approached your sell-by date. And my family absolutely destroyed me. Like They just went for the kill. My dad was kind of like, he knew what I was talking about, but the female members of my family and even some of the extended male members, they were not having a bar of it. So I guess I'd like to take the opportunity to clarify that point that I made. Uh, that you're approaching because now my sister alhamdulillah she's happily married alhamdulillah to a beautiful brother as well Allahumma barak. She, she really hit the jackpot with him beautiful brother Allahumma barak. and um, I guess this is an opportunity considering I have my own platform now to take the opportunity to clarify what I meant when I said you're approaching your cell by day in case there was you know some type of misconception in case I you know maybe I overdid it so I guess I want to take this opportunity to apologize, is what I would like to say. To absolutely nobody. Yes, when you hit 25, you are approaching your sell-by date. <laughs> what did you think this is? You actually thought I was going to apologize, didn't you? You really thought I was going to retract that statement. No. When you get to 25, sisters, you are in direct competition, blood sport, with the new conveyor belt of 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23 year old sisters. That's your competition. Psh, you thought I was going to apologize. My foot is going to apologize. This is serious. It's not a joke. Because this is how men are thinking. I am just standing here telling you what most men are thinking on the inside. I'm sitting here 
with enough balls to tell you what we are actually thinking. This is what we're thinking. And this was long before I came across any of this type of material online. It was innate. Instinctively, I knew it. Like, sis, you get to 25 and you're still not married. Like, you're in trouble. Like, big man saying, you're in trouble. You can't allow yourself to voluntarily get to 25. Some women say, oh, it's not the, the right man didn't come. All right, whatever. Fine. Let's not go there. But you can't, like, you need to be proactive in this regard. It's serious. It's really serious. Alhamdulillah, my sister got married, like I said, to a beautiful brother. She really hit the jackpot with him. Allahumma barak. Beautiful brother, mashallah. And um, all worked out well for her. Alhamdulillah. Point is this, ladies. You get this privilege that you are born with. It is a privilege. Your youth, your beauty, your beauty. It is a privilege. Why? Because it makes you immediately desirable to a large demographic of men. For free. You didn't have to do, you didn't have to do anything for it. And I know this grates on a lot of women because a lot of women want to be valued for other things. And if you guys watched my stream from yesterday, you will see how I debunked that myth of men valuing women for their education and so on. And if you haven't, you need to watch it. Because I take the example of the Hur Ain and the many different descriptions that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given the Hur Al Ain. Full breasted, round eyed, you know, uh, lots of objective physical descriptions. Watch my stream from yesterday. Where in that did you see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talking about the IQ of the Hur Al Ain or the intelligence or the education? It's 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 a non-starter. Why? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows his creation best. He knows what gets men going. Of course, he created us subhana. He knows what motivates us as men. And what motivates us as men to the point where oftentimes men will literally, Muslim men, will literally put their lives on the line in order to experience that in Jannah. What is it? Beauty. Beauty, purity, chastity, etc. One second, guys. We just have to take a quick, uh, quick break there. <clears throat> it is youth and beauty that gets a man going. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from, from his infinite wisdom knows this, of course, he created us. And please, if you haven't watched that stream from yesterday, go and watch it. I quote to you many ayat from the Quran. And some from, I believe, no, I think it was all Quran. All of it was Quran. Where the Hur al Ain have been described to us. They have been described. You will not find anywhere anything to do with their intelligence, education, what, you know, whatever equivalence may be. Sisters, you are looking for that in us. You, you are looking for that in us. Don't make the terrible terrible unforgivable mistake of making a false equivalency a false equivalency what does that mean is that you basically make this incorrect presumption that what's good for the goose is good for the gander it is not what is good for the goose is sometimes good for the gander oftentimes it's not we're about to have the damn ice cream truck come down right now Flipping ice cream truck does this to me every week. Can you hear it? So irritating. And he stops right outside my house because he knows he knows my son wants the damn ice cream. That's why. Uh, well, I'm on to you, Mr. Ice Cream Man. Do not make the mistake of making this false equivalency. Some things we are we mutually desire. Some things I'm trying to think off the top of my head spontaneously. What do we both mutually desire in each other? I can't think quick enough off the top of my head. But oftentimes we don't. What's good for the goose is not necessarily good for the gander. Abdul Hamid, shout out to you, brother. <laughs> Big super chat. Appreciate it, my man. Fifty dollars super chat. Assalamu alaikum, Akhi Abdul Hamid here. Apparently, my sister was also rejecting suitors almost during her entire twenties. Subhanallah, this is sad. And now she is twenty-nine. And now there is a revert brother who is interested in marriage uh, than expected. They both plan on getting married soon. 
May Allah bless their union, my brother. May Allah bless their union. And alhamdulillah, you know, if she's having good, decent, respectable brother approaching her, then good, alhamdulillah. The only thing I will say is, you know, you've you've heard me mention in the past the importance of um, being aware of the urf, the cultural, the customs and cultures of different people. You're South Asian, Abdul Hamid. You will have, I believe you're South Asian, correct me if I'm wrong. Um, you will have certain customs and cultures. You must ask yourself, will this revert brother be able to uh, understand what those customs and cultures are? It happens a lot. I've seen it a lot where revert brothers and sisters get married and there's a big clash of cultures. The revert brother or sister is bringing his or her culture and the, the born Muslim brother or sister is bringing her culture. And there's no superiority or inferiority of being a born Muslim or uh, a, a revert. Let me just make that uh, absolutely clear. Right? There's no, no difference whatsoever. But the culture can often serve, it can really be a, what's the word I'm looking for? A point of issue, a point of contention, really, can be really super problematic. Super problematic. So just be aware of that, inshallah ta'ala. You know, if you feel that, inshallah, you know, that the brother you know, can make it work and that, you know, the cultures won't, won't clash too much, then alhamdulillah, this is good. And I don't like focusing too much on culture because, you know, culture really does get in the way, but it's something we can't ignore. If you are raised, okay, um, I don't know if we have any Bangladeshis here in the chat right now. Bangladeshis have a very, a very specific cuisine. I can tell immediately between um, Indian food or Pakistani food and then Bangladeshi food straight away. And I enjoy Indian food, so long as it's not too spicy. I enjoy Pakistani food. Bangladeshi food, it's not for me. It's not for me. Especially their desserts, their sweets. I, I just don't get it. My palate doesn't get it. I wasn't born in it. I wasn't raised in it. I was pretty much raised upon South Asian food, even though I'm not South Asian. You know, who doesn't eat curry, right? We all get understand curry. But there's something specific about Bangladeshi food that my palate doesn't get. Is this good? Is it bad? No, it's neither nor. This is not a matter of good or bad. It's a matter of my palate doesn't get it. And that's the end of that. Period. Equally, this can also happen with the clashing of cultures sometimes. Your palate doesn't get it. So you have to be aware of that. Once again, Abdul Hamid, I appreciate it. I was born and raised in the US, but yes, I'm ethnically Pakistani. Right, there you go. Then. There you go. Even if you're born and raised in a particular country, you are still going to be um, accustomed to a particular, your particular culture because, you know, it doesn't just disappear. You probably speak the language, your 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 language, your parents, um, obviously, if they were raised back home in South Asia, they have brought their customs from back home to them. So it doesn't matter if you're in a new country. Sure, you will be filtered. You will be like, uh, you know, concentrate juice. You put the concentrate in and then you put the water. It's like you're, you're diluted, essentially. But it's still there. And it's something to be aware of because I have seen this play out in real, in real time with brothers and sisters, particularly when the brother is the river, there can often be a clash of cultures and just a total breakdown in understanding. And it's not right or wrong. It just is. And it's something to be aware of. Okay? Once again, I appreciate Abdul Hamid. My man, always here. Allah Mubarak. <sighs> okay. I have an article to go through with you, with you guys. Inshallah ta'ala. Let's pull this up. Share screen. Chrome tail. Another one. Got another one of these. Hope you guys are ready. Bismillah. I hope Brother Abu American joins us soon, inshallah. All right. Let's go through this. It's sad. You know, I've said this before. Wallahi, I take no pleasure in reading these articles. I don't take any pleasure in it. I don't sit there and think, ha, yeah. Gotcha, baby. Nope. Not at all. It's sad. It's sad. Wallahi, it's sad. And for a long time, as I mentioned, I was worried for my sister. My my first sister, she got married at 19. Allahumma barak. She had her nikah at 19. She did her walima at 20. Um, so, you know, she was taken care of quickly. My second one, you know, we were getting a bit worried at one point. Alhamdulillah, she married. She didn't, like I said, she didn't just marry any old brother. She married Allahumma barak. An excellent brother. Let's just keep it there. I won't say anymore. Excellent brother, Allahumma barak. And, and as a brother, you do worry. Like, I'm not going to lie, pretend and like I'm tell you guys that I'm the closest with my sisters. No, I'm not. But, you know, they're still my sisters and I still have their best interests at heart. 
And I'm sure any brother can relate. Any father can relate for that matter. You guys know on some level of consciousness, whether you're clocking it consciously or not, that once your daughters and sisters get past a certain age, no matter what their degrees are looking like, what their educational background is looking like, you know they're in trouble. You know it. You know they're in trouble. So let's, let's read this. Go through this. 25 plus year old fellow unmarried sisters. What do we do? I feel like I'm never going to get married. I'm seeing women and girls much younger than me getting married. And that's when every Desi woman knows she's hitting the upper limit. This is a very interesting point that she's making here because one of my, um, I knew of a sister once who she was attending many weddings and so on of family members of hers that were like a decade younger than her, even a whole generation younger than her. This sister was like coming on towards 40 years old, still unmarried. And she was really starting to feel it. She was really starting to feel it, you know. My baby cousins are getting married. My baby cousins, I held them in my hand. When they were babies, I changed their nappies. They're getting married before me. And it's like, uh, especially in the Muslim community, South Asians, Arabs, because we're very ageist. Yes, we are. We're ageist. You feel it. You definitely feel it in the Muslim community. And it's like a turning point, a moment of realization. It's like, oh my days, my baby cousin, that I used to change her nappy. She just got married. And I'm still out here not married. This is a problem. It absolutely is a problem. Dude, Desi, once again, my man, appreciate it, Akhi. <laughs> Abdul Hamid, always out here supporting the channel. Respect you, brother. Shaitan knows the inherent nature of women, specifically their fitna nature, and knows how to capitalize upon it. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us Muslim men an abundance of iman and hikmah to deal with this. Yeah, I mean, I would say that shaitan knows both of us very well. Shaitan, you, he has a life, a, a not a lifetime, a the entire human history of how to work human beings. And the only barrier and defense that you have against shaitan is by what? Fearing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and taking the remedies and advice that he has given us. That's it. But yes, I understand what you're saying. They are uh, more easily swayed I think is what Abdul Hamid is saying. Let's carry on with this article. It's like there's something wrong with me. I'm an established 28-year-old with a great job that guys would go for, and yet guys would go for a 20-year-old still in college. I mean, talk about the moment of clarity, eh? Talk about the moment of clarity. She is clocking all of a sudden that I'm established. I have my career. I have my job. Why don't men value this? Let me tell you why. Because you are not going to want to share your job and career with your husband when you get married. Rightly so too. That onus falls upon the husband. So why the falafel should he value it in the first place? Do you see the false equivalency? You're not thinking. Just think. Hold on a minute. Do I want to pay the bills or do I want him to pay the bills? If I'm going to be falling pregnant, then um, I expect him to foot the bills. Right. But then that means we don't value it. That's the catch. That's the catch. We're going to keep doing this until we flip him. Make enough awareness, inshallah. It's like the summer. What's wrong with me? Yeah, we've been there. I feel old undesirable bear in mind guys remember she's only 28 years old she's not old in the the scheme of life but she's definitely in her epiphany stage she's definitely in the epiphany stage 27 to 35 years old where she's realizing hold on a minute i can't compete as well as i used to when i was just five years earlier and like literally just like that article we read yesterday a woman's beauty declines in earnest after the age of 25 in earnest it declines rapidly between 20 and 25 that's pretty much the same thing 25 to 30 oh boy that's a big difference 30 to 35 forget about it like the article that, that, that guy wrote on the article yesterday stick a fork in you big difference big difference <sighs> everyone around me is getting married Engaged women complain about how annoying the wedding planning is all over Facebook. 
Instagram, Twitter, hashtag engaged problems. This is a covert way of showing off, by the way. When people complain about something that you know full well, they should not be complaining about. Let me just make it clear to you guys. They are showing off. This is one way of showing off, of them showing to the world something that they're proud of, that they have, and that they want other people to know about. But they can't just go out there and just tell everyone, you know, how amazing their life is. So what do they do instead? They complain. They pretend to complain anyway. This is just the undercover way of showing off, which is uh, stupid because now you're going to have to contend with da'in, especially for sisters who are not married. They're constantly posting pictures of their proposals, bridal showers, but but Pakis, I don't know what that is. Can one of the Pakistani brothers in the chat explain to me what that means? Everything. It's all my friends talk about. Am I wrong to block them? Wow, my sister's gone to the extent of blocking them, you know. Am I wrong to block them on social media and to mentally check out when marriage conversations come up? I mean, let's not moralize here. I understand exactly where the sister's coming from. It's like rubbing salt into the wound. And by the way, this is a learning curve here. This is a learning curve. Something very important. Uh, Abdul Hamid, absolutely. I'm already depressed listening to the sister's story. I'm telling you, bro. I'm telling you. Ah. And let me just make something clear to you. Oh, I lost my train of thought. Let me get, bring the article back up. Oh, where are we? Am I wrong to block them on social media and to mentally check out? Yes. To those of you who are watching right now, never, ever make the mistake, the blunder, the social blunder of thinking that the masses are happy for your success. Never, ever make this mistake. Never put up a post on social media about something great that's happened to you. Job raise, new car, new house, extension. I see it all the time. And think that people are happy for you. They're not. The majority of people are not. The overwhelming majority of people are not. Let me explain to you why. When you put your successes or the, in, the upgrades that have happened to your life and you put them out there, what you do is you shine a spotlight on the misery, hardships, lack of success that other people are going through. Your success serves as a spotlight to highlight how bad other people's lives are. Contrast principle. The better your life is, even if the reality is you might be miserable and depressed secretly, but you know how people just put highlight reels of their lives on social media. The better your life appears to others, the worse their life, their own life appears to them. And this will be a source of, of, of embitterment from them to you from them to you because you are reminding them about how terrible their their lives are contrast your success shines a spotlight on their lack thereof never make the mistake of thinking that your success is appreciated and celebrated by others you are a fool if you think this an absolute moron Always bear that in mind. I'm happy for them, of course. Nah, she's not happy for them. Let me tell you straight up, this one is not happy for them. She curses them secretly. I'm happy for them, of course, but for the woman that was crying two months ago, how she was undesirable, to now be rubbing it in my face that she has yet another appointment with a wedding planner, and life was so much simpler when I was single. Once again, this is a covert way of showing off. This woman who's doing that is showing off. She's not actually going through any major drama with the wedding planner or whatever. Maybe she's going through a couple of things. But what she really wants to do is remind the world of something she has that other people don't. In this case, she has a wedding proposal or an imminent wedding coming up. And she knows many of her friends don't, but would love to. They'd love to, obviously. So she she is frequently reminding them of something that they wish they had that they don't. This is a form of riyah. There's no two ways about it. This is a form of showing off. And it's stupid as well. 
because she's unnecessarily asking for trouble. Practicing brothers clearly prefer women who wear partial hijab. No, this is not true at all, but we'll get to that. With copious bangs and hair showing. I wish they understood what message that sent to the rest of us. How it seems like you just want a woman who wears hijab but still looks good. So here, this is what's going on here. This sister is making the mistake of thinking that if women who don't wear hijab and so on are attracting attention, then I too must have to do this in order to attract attention. Now what's going on is, is that you are older. You're older and that's why you're struggling. I'm 100% certain if we ask this sister when she was in her early 20s, she had plenty of brothers on her doorstep. Late teens, early 20s, no problem. No problem. DMs are full. I don't know when that article was released, if there were even DMs back then. But my point is this. When you are young, you have options as a woman. When you're young, you have options. Makeup or no makeup. And you look half decent, alhamdulillah. Why? Because there's something about youth that is beautiful in and of itself. Even if you're an average looking woman. Something about youth that is beautiful on a woman in and of itself. Beauty is inherently tied to the feminine. That's why men are not beautiful. Men cannot be beautiful. Men are handsome. And that's a different type of beauty. I don't want to use the word beauty, but men are not beautiful. We are handsome, and oftentimes, it, and that's obviously if he's handsome in the first place, and oftentimes that takes time for that handsomeness, for want of a better word, to mature. It takes time for it to mature. Sometimes you'll see a young man, early 20s, you know, his features look amazing, but he looks a bit like a baby, baby-faced. It takes a bit of time for his face to mature, for him to grow into himself, for him to grow into himself. You see, women, completely different, because women are beautiful. And that is inherently tied to youth, you see, at least your peak beauty anyway. So the mistake she's making here is thinking that essentially I need to take off my hijab and wear big bangs and all the rest of it. No, it's that those women you are comparing yourself to are younger. You said it at the beginning of the article. False equivalency. And I've seen this, and let's talk about this for a second, because this plays out a lot in the Muslim community where sisters feel undesirable because they're wearing hijab and they feel like the hijab is acting as a barrier for them finding a husband and this is just not true this is patently untrue if it were well then what, what do you think our religion is oppressive I and mean, what are you trying to say yes you probably left it late and now you're starting to worry but for a practicing brother by the way if that's what you're trying to attract he is not interested in a sister whose beauty and tabarruj is on display no you attract what you get if you're going to go out there with no hijab full face of makeup and all the rest of it you're going to attract a brother who doesn't mind that which means what that brother has iman issues himself that's the type of brother you're going to attract but i understand the dilemma i understand you know once you, you realize hold on a minute that ship sailing you, you, you try and pull out all the stops and i'm not putting down women who wear hijab in whatever way i will never put down a woman's attire but when it comes to the actual headscarf and that women whose entire necks jawlines collarbones are exposed with artfully arranged bangs are marrying men who plan on going on to be alims <laughs> i don't know where she's seen that but you know what a lot of men can fall trap can fall prey to beauty it's true i mean uh, you know what she's got a point some men are so bowled over by a woman woman's beauty that he'll marry her the way she is but best believe once he's tied her down he's gonna come down with the <laughs> immediately big slap I know brothers in, in my community, in the Algerian community, they married one brother I'm thinking of. He married a sister and he married this sister and she wasn't wearing hijab. And she was like, you know, do you have a problem with me not wearing hijab? And he said, no, no, no problem. What problem? No problem. No hijab. No problem. I just need to bid. Let me bid. <laughs> he married her. The first day, not week, not one, the first day after their marriage, she wanted to leave the house, you know, and do something. I don't know, go to the shops or something. And he said to her, wait, wait, wait. Where are you going? Put your hijab on. <laughs> Straight away. And this problem is not even like an alim or anything like that. But that ghira, you see? 
So, and I, again, I'm not saying it's right or wrong, obviously. You know, if you don't make that clear before the marriage, you are essentially fooling her. My point is this. Those men will not tolerate it after a marriage. Uh, where are we? And I'm not putting down women who wear hijab in whatever way. I will never put down a woman's attire. But when it comes to the actual headscarf, and that women whose entire necks, jawlines, collarbones are exposed with artfully arranged bangs and marrying men who plan on going to be islands is so confusing as to what a practicing man is actually looking for. And now let me eliminate that confusion for you, my sister. Let me make it very clear for you. Practicing, not practicing, Muslim, Jew, Hindi, atheist, doesn't matter. We are all looking for pretty much the same thing. You have to pass the eyeball test, beauty. And then after that, can you be nice to me? And spread, that's it. That's it. Do you pass the eyeball test? Do you have the ability to be nice to me? Hit the like on your way in, in your, on your way in, please, guys. Barakallahu feekum. Hit that like. Do you pass the eyeball test? You don't have to be looking like a flipping, I don't know, supermodel. But, you know, do you pass the eyeball test? Khalas, alhamdulillah, we're happy. Do you have a body that resembles the shape of a female and not a whale? Yes, you heard that right. A female, not a whale. I know they sound the same, female, whale. No, but we want the, the first one, female, not whale. <laughs> if you're fat, get into shape. I, ca I can't say that enough. You're on the market? Okay, let's say you're a car salesman. And no, you're not beyond being objectified, sisters. Oh, I'm not a car. I've got something for you. I've got something for you on that topic. A beautiful message that a brother sent me, actually. Explaining this concept to me, but you you're going to the you you're going to sell your car. You want to sell your car, okay? Hold on. You want to sell your vehicle. How are you going to present your vehicle? With mud on it and scratches all over the car, and flipping the alloys are bust up and everything like that. Is that how you're going to present your vehicle? No, you're going to take it to the car wash. You're going to make sure you get those. Key scratches taken out, buffered, whatever the word is. Maybe you have to get a lick of paint for it, possibly, if it's an expensive, more expensive car and you're asking a higher price. Bottom line is, you are going to have to take care of the vehicle. You will have to take care of the vehicle. Equally, my sister, I say the same to you. You must take care of the vehicle of you. How about Americans? Salaam alaikum wa rahmatullah. Apologies. I, I, I thought we were starting at eight. My bad, bro. Oh no, uh, okay, well, there's a miscommunication between us, inshallah. How you doing, Akhi? I'm good, alhamdulillah. How about you? How's everything? Alhamdulillah, barakallah. Very good, Akhi. Yeah, I'm just going through this article here, Akhi, about America. And it's, um, I was saying, I, I take no pleasure in reading these articles, but it's a sister. She's educated. She's got a good job. Mm -hmm. she's, 20, she's 28 years old, and she's struggling to find a brother for marriage. That's, 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 the, that's the long and short of it. Wow. How are you struggling? Wait, 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 wait. How are you struggling at 28 years old to find a brother? I mean, even at 28, you still, you know, you should be able to like find a brother. That shouldn't be like, you know, rocket science. That shouldn't be complicated. Well, you know, that's that raises an interesting point, actually, because this could be one of two things. Number one, she's definitely in competition with the younger girls. She's made that quite clear. Her younger friends are getting married. And yeah. number two, however, and something <clears throat> I mentioned at the beginning of the stream is that as a woman becomes more established in her career, in her job, and so on, her requirements from a man go up. Indeed. So it's quite possible that she does have plenty of suitors offering themselves to her, but they are not the men she wants. She priced herself out the market. Right. Right. Exactly. Yeah. She priced yeah, herself indeed. out the market. So not only are her, uh, her best years behind her in terms of being able to uh, 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 pull the attention of the largest group of men but now she compounds that problem with her education and her, the success that she has experienced in her career thinking that well I deserve better bottom line you know? <laughs> oh my she does she you know she <clears throat> I say this all the time I mean you can attest to this women have to stop trying to become what they're attracted to they're attracted to top tier high earning you know top 10 top five percent men well if you become that if you become a top tier 10 20 percent person how many people are actually up there it's not many mm. Be that's the exact point you want a high value you know 
high scarcity man. He's high value because he is. He's scarce in terms of like his accomplishments and these types of men, these high achieving individuals, they're rare and they're difficult to find because it's difficult to become. Mm. And when you get up there with those people, well, you're still looking up because you want higher than where you're at now. Because as we know, women tend to marry equal or up. Men will marry across all spectrums in general in terms of equal and below. <clears throat> so Sisters really have to. I'm not saying don't get a career. I'm not saying don't perform well in your career. I'm not saying, you know, be a slacker. But I've talked about this before. Sisters, what they need to do, they're doing the whole process backwards. Get married first, then make your career, your career later. You know? Right, right. You, you okay. got your whole life. But I'm you play, that I'm goes play devil's advocate with you. I'm going to play devil's advocate with you, Abu American. Mm -hmm. Let's say, so you, you said just now, you know, get married first and then do your career. Fine. But then a, a comeback that a lot of sisters will say is, but what if my husband doesn't let me? What if he won't let me? which is quite possible. Maybe he wants to stay at home wife. Then what? Because this is what puts a lot of women off getting married in the first place. Well, if you played your cards right and you used your youth and beauty to get the proper man, then you won't have to worry about it anyway. Mm. Why would you need a career? It, you know, here's the thing. Let, let me ask this. I'd have to throw back another question. Why do you want to go out and get a career if you're married to a high success, you know, a highly successful man? Get a home career. You can do something at home. You can make a home business. There's a lot of successful home businesses. Mm. You, you know what? I saw... I saw a home business. I put my daughter onto it because my daughter, she's, you know, graphic designer. She studies graphic design and everything. People are at home making 50 plus thousand every six months selling uh, coloring books for children on Etsy. Wow. Wow. You, you can't come up with something? Yeah, you can't marry a high value guy and then come up with a concept and say, hey, honey, I need a laptop and, you know, this, that, the other. He gets it for you and then supports you in your business. You, you, what? <laughs> these people are doing better than half the people in the world from home on etsy you don't right. what's a career nowadays a career it seems more like a limitation than an advancement than anything else i mean get that high value guy stay at home chill and come up with ideas work on your ideas work on concepts things you always wanted to do you want to make soap or something my wife bought, bought a whole house with soap you make soap at home she bought a whole house with it Wow, that's amazing! She bought a whole house selling soap along about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She <laughs> sold it. She sold it before she came to Germany. But I'm just saying, she was she was just in Indonesia making soap and bought a house. Wow. You might think, oh, it's Indonesia. Yeah, I'm American. This, that, the other. Yeah, but you got to remember, she's living at the, the same you know cost of living level as everybody else in her environment. So selling soap, that's pretty impressive. Mm. Wow. So yeah, yeah, that's heavy. I mean, I think women want to be. They want to be uh, appreciated for the hard work that they have put into their careers, which is understandable. I had a client the other day, Abu American, and um, he's a young man. And the sister he was looking to marry, uh -huh. uh, she's actually studied. They're the same age, early 20s. And she's studying. I don't want to give too many details, but um, she's studying something to that, what, that will end up in. She will become. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Her. Career, her job will be very like high class, like a yeah. high powered job. Okay, let's just keep it there so I can preserve the brother's anonymity. And um, she said to him, So, what do you value in me? What do you appreciate in me? You know, hoping to hear something. And he said to her, Oh, you know, um, you're beautiful and um, I, you cook really nice food. I tasted your food when I came around to your parents' house, and um, yeah, you're, you're nice. She got angry. She said, what? What about I'm ambitious, I'm intelligent, I'm educated, I'm studying this subject here. And he was like, this, but he said to me, and this was long before I discovered any of this content, is what he said. He was like, that was my innate natural response. You're nice. You look nice. And you're nice to me. Yes. Like, and she got angry, Abu American. She got angry that he was not valuing her for the things she wanted to be valued for. Mm. You know? Men are far simpler than women give us, you know, credit for. I mean, and it's not like a bad type of credit, you know, bad credit. But I'm just saying it's like we're, we're very simple creatures. Mm -hmm. Most sisters don't understand that in general, in general, as long as you you you, you maintain your value, we, we understand what I'm talking about. You know, you stay a little you stay relatively fit and uh, which will help you stay attractive. And you could literally, well, maybe not literally, but you'd be close to the you could have the intelligence level of two bricks rubbed together. And brothers will troll line up to marry you in general. It's so yeah, easy. Yeah. We can't do that as men. Women got it easy mode and they're complicating it. Mm. And for what? 
Mm. For what? Why complicate it? Sisters, just be nice, be polite, be well mannered. Don't just smash cheeseburgers or whatever else puts on all the pounds like an insane, you know, person that's going to die tomorrow. And you will get the guy you want very quickly, inshallah. Mm. It's not complicated. Shout out to Rahim. Rahim, Gina, my man. Inshallah. <laughs> Habibi, barakallah, fiqh, salamu alaikum, just supporting you, boss, you are kidding out. Much appreciated, my man. Rahim, shout out to you, brother, part of my uh, men's community. Rahim, Allah mubarak, Rahim is a special brother. I, I, I don't know if I can say any more than that, but Rahim is a special brother, Allah mubarak. <laughs> I'll hear him to talk whether he wants to or not. Zakallah khair, Rahim, much appreciated, man. Um, Yeah, I mean, I, I did a, uh, a podcast with Sister Naima the other day, Abu Marika. Mm. And I have to say, I was uh, quite surprised. No, I was shocked how RP aware she is. She is fully RP aware. Okay. And I was expecting for us to, you know, disagree on a lot of things. I've read her book. I've seen her videos. And um, no, not at all. She said to me, if you had had this conversation with me back in 2019, then yeah, we would have disagreed on a lot of stuff. But I have consumed, bro, she's consumed more content uh, from different, uh, a, a wider source of creators than I have. Some guys, wow. she was, I don't even know them, you know. And she actually was on a mediocre tutorial and reviews YouTube channel yesterday. She had a conversation with him. Wow. And um, she's like, she was saying, like, fundamentally, what you what you guys are putting out there is not wrong. We don't necessarily like it. And she don't get me wrong, she didn't agree with everything I said. But for the most part, fundamentally, it is what it is. You know, and I think women yep. don't like this. They don't like the fact that we don't like them for what they want us to like them for. Yeah, well, that's feminism for you. It's trained them into, it's trying to train them out of their nature, out of their feminine nature, you know, and uh, you, you can't do that. You know, you can't change masculine nature. You can't change feminine nature, you know, the way that Allah's created us and the way he's put it into us. So it's like, Meat's gonna be meat to a lion. It's, you know what I mean. You can't dress up a bunch of vegetables and say, "Ah, oh, look at this uh, vegan steak," and it's gonna like it. It's the same thing with attraction. It's not. Mm. It's, nothing's gonna change that. And you know what? You see what you said there. Meat's gonna be meat. I did a stream yesterday, and um, on this stream, I, I covered a, a number of different things. But I, I read something recently that men, when men view uh, see a woman, the part of their brain that lights up is a similar part that lights up when they view objects, like inanimate ob objects, literally, right? Yeah. And I was playing them, uh, the guys at TikTok, because I was having this conversation with the family yesterday, and my daughter was like, oh, uh, I, yeah, yeah, I saw that on TikTok. I, I saw a video, like, I was like, show it to me, send me the video. And I pulled up the video, and I actually played it on the screen afterwards uh, on my stream. And um, basically, men, when they first see a woman, they see her parts before they see the whole. So we look, especially if we're looking from a view to either marry for Muslims or just be intimate for non-Muslims, whatever the case may be. And if we're looking to go down that path, we first look at her as the sum of her parts, meaning face, breasts, bum, hip to waist ratio, check, 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 check. Okay, fine. Now I can look at you as the human being that you are. And it sounds really bad. It sounds really bad. Well, but we have science now, we have technology that actually proves this. That, yeah. That's how a man first sees a woman. Do you check those things first? If you do, which is not hard, frankly speaking, you know, you look after this, alhamdulillah. If you do, then we can look at you for the whole that you are. And I think this is uh, like, this is hugely unsavory for a lot of women. I mean, uh, <laughs> how do you, you know what? Now it's my turn to, to disagree. I think women women intrinsically know this. They know this. This is why makeup is a thing. Mm. They're not putting on makeup for myself and for, you know, whatever else. They know what the effect of makeup is on their look. This is why filters are a thing with these women. They're, they're, they understand that men are visually attracted to them. Waist trainers. Mm. Do you see men wearing waist trainers? Mm. No. So they can get that hourglass shape and all that type of stuff. Men don't wear those things. Those hip enhancers. You know, do men wear hip enhancers? No, no. Who made plastic surgery a thing? Getting bigger bums, getting bigger breasts, getting bigger. This was it guys or was it women getting bigger lips? Why did they do this? Because they intrinsically, they instinctively know that men are visually attracted to them. And so they want to stand out with the features that they know 
men are attracted to bigger hips, bigger breast, bigger bum, bigger lips. They know these things stand out to men. And so they do it. They get them enhanced. They, if they can't get them enhanced, they, then they, you know, they, they buy some sort of piece of clothing or whatever else. Apple bottom jeans. I remember when that was the first type of thing. Now they've come out with the, apparently, what is it? Some sort of TikTok sweatpants or something. Apparently this has been a thing. They all find a way to enhance what they have because they, and then they say, oh, my, you know, because brother sent me this stuff. I'm like, what are you doing? Why, what does your TikTok look like? <laughs> it's like, you know, reacting to my husband in the TikTok leggings. And I'm like, wait, the, they yeah. know, yeah. they know. So, it, you know, it's just the problem is the, what they get angry about in terms of objectification is when they're objectified by the wrong guy. You know? Right. That's so important. Ooh. Talk about that. Yeah, talk about Ooh. that. <laughs> yeah. No, because I, I, I was watching, uh, I can't remember which channel it was now, but this guy, he goes around to various parts of uh, Las Vegas Strip. And mm. he, asks girl, he asks girls, um, is it creepy if a guy cat calls you? And her response was exactly what you just said. And her response was, uh, if I'm unattracted to him, then yeah, that was the that was the condition. If I'm attracted to him, it's not creepy. But if yeah. I'm, meaning she is the uh, she is the deciding force as to whether this is considered as attractive or unattractive, right? Indeed. If I find him unattractive, then yes, he's unattractive. You know, I've just yeah. had the Adan go off here. Let me just read the super chat real quick, uh, American. Joe, I'd appreciate the five dollar super chat, my man. Women should focus on femininity, motherhood, and being a submissive wife. I mean, a lot of women take issue with this word submission. I mean, talk about that for a second, uh, Abu American, before we wrap this up, real quick. Submission. I mean, why would they take offense to it? I don't. I, you know, I never understood this. I actually, you know, I've written a book on like female submission and whatnot, and um, you know, I, I covered this pretty much in depth and in detail, and. Why it's a bad word, I'm still trying to figure it out. Uh, I've got chapters and chapters, and there's really no solution as to why it's a bad word. It's just become one. Uh, who knows, bro? I don't know what that's all about. There's nothing wrong with it. What's wrong with submission? I mean, the fear, is, the fear is that uh, she will be taken, taken advantage of. She feels like she's giving up whatever she's given up and that she will be taken advantage of. But then my response is, what other choice do you have? I mean, you're choosing to marry him, then you need to trust him to lead you, right? Because if you don't, you will be clashing like two out, out of gorillas in the household day and night. But, you know, I brought this up in my book that I, it hasn't been published yet. And it's like, I talked about work, the work home dynamic. Is Are you not being taken advantage you know, when you go to a job, I don't care if you make 50 pounds an hour, you're being taken advantage of because you're selling the hours of your life for a certain sum of money and it's never worth it. One way or another, you're being taken advantage societally, you know, this, that, the other. It's like you said, what you pick, pick your poison. Mm. But if you're going to be submissive to somebody, then at least be submissive to somebody who loves you. Mm. You go to your job, you're submissive. These women have no problem being submissive, happy, cheery all the time for their bosses. They don't go in there and give him her PMS cramp attitude. She doesn't do that to him. Then she'll come home and give it to her husband. You know, so she's absolutely submissive to her boss for some measly sum of money per hour. And this guy who will literally put his life on the line for her. She gives him all sorts of crap. I'm not going to be a submissive wife. And this guy is willing to die for you. Mm. Mm. Talk it's to a him. weird dynamic, man. It just don't make any sense to me at all. I, I really don't understand it. Mm. Subhanallah. Dude, that's you. Abdul Hamid, once again, my man, appreciate it. A woman has more power of influence being submissive. Oof, that's deep, bro. Than aggressive. I swear the things that women complain about a lot understand. This is very, very powerful, what Abdul Hamid has just written there. There is a certain superpower in acting feminine as a woman. I, I, this is a great point, Abdul Hamid. Barakallahu feek. You want to get the best out of a man? Just be soft. Absolutely. He'll, he'll be like butter. He'll melt. It's very hard for a man to still be, you know, harsh and 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 understanding like a like very aggressively, if you like, when the woman is being soft with him. That is the kryptonite of a man. That's all I talk that's about this in yeah. I talk about this in my video on fight or flight. It's an old video where I had Becky and Ling Ling, my two wives, and we were talking about this: the fight or flight, fight or flight reaction of men. And when you start, you know, being hard and harsh with your man and everything like this, you give him only two options to fight you or to flee from you. And he doesn't want to do either because he loves you. Mm. Just be gentle. The guy, he'll do anything you want. Mm. Subhanallah. Deep. Hey, guys, no, no. I pulled up that super chat. I pulled it up. I pulled it up. 
I did pull it up. Barakallahu feek Rahim once again. Akhi Abu American, my adhan, the adhan has just gone off here. So I'm going to go and pray. I'm sure it's gone off on, on your end as well. Barakallahu yeah. Akhi. Next week we'll be on Abu American's channel, inshallah. Abu American, anything you'd like to, to drop or anything like that, inshallah? No, Barakallahu Afiq. Sorry, man. I, I was confused about the time. So, you know, I, I was waiting to come on right now at 8 o'clock. So I'm like... <laughs> No so, problem. And then I saw you were alive. I was like, wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, inshallah, no problem. Yeah. yeah, anything you want to drop, Akhi Abu American? No, 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 moment. Barakallah Afiq. Um, just jazakallah jah- jah- khair, man. I'm going to let you get to the salah, inshallah. We, we got more time, inshallah. Inshallah, Tal. Do Desi, all right. Do Desi, my man. Mothers can wrap sons around their fingers as compared to fathers. How the same feel? Do Desi, remind me next time on the next uh, conversation, on the next stream, I will answer this. Do not send another super chat. Just put it in the chat. I will answer this then, inshallah, Tal. Barakallah Fikum, Zakam Allah Khair. Like that video on your way out. Abu American, once again, Zakallah Khair for joining. And I'll catch you guys on the next one, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.